Hi, my name is Reginald Andre, and I am a cybersecurity expert. And if you're watching this video, you most likely got hacked. You most likely got an email from your bank or from an online company that to let you know that either your email, your password, your credit card number, or some type of sensitive data um, was compromised and they're alerting you about this. So in my video today, I'm gonna be talking about um, what it means to get hacked, where does your information go, and most importantly, what do you do next? So let's begin. Um, first thing is, the club that you have just joined is a big club. Um, just to give you some statistics, um, Yahoo had a um, breach a few years ago where they had three billion, three billion with a B, birthday, email addresses, security um, exposed. Um, Equifax, which is the credit um, credit card monitoring agency, they had 147 million people um, with a breach. Adobe, 152 million username and passwords were stolen. And um, more recently, MyFitnessPal, which is the uh, fitness application, they had 150 email addresses taken um, from their from their server. So. You have joined a big club. You have joined something that um, many Americans are now, unfortunately, having to face. You know, one of the things that we are finding now is that people are too comfortable giving out their information. The other day, I took my son to uh, a urgent care center, and the urgent care center actually did not take insurance. They only took cash or, or credit. And when we were filling out the information, it was asking all of this information that really wasn't necessary. He had scraped his knee and we just essentially needed to, you know, get it stitched up or cleaned up or whatever. And they were asking about what school he went to, um, what's his, what's, what does he like to do on his spare time. They were asking, uh, they asked for his social security number. I'm like, hey, look, he's just here for, for uh, a little wound on his, on his leg. Why, why do you need all this information? So when going forward, I would highly recommend that when you're um, filling out um, at a doctor's office or if you're at a retail shop and they're asking you for maybe your email address, your birthday, be very careful who you give it to. And let's just say, for example, you are at a retail, for example, uh, um, Gap. A lot of times you go to Gap and if you tell them when your birthday is, they give you 15% off on your birthday or Kohl's does that as well. I would highly recommend that you create an email address, which I'm going to call a throwaway email address. And with that email address, what that, what that does is you give them that email address. That's not your main email address. And that way, if their systems ever get hacked, they're giving the bad guys has an email that you hardly use. It's not linked to like, for example, your banking, your online, like your serious online accounts. This is just a throwaway. So that's the first thing that I'm highly going to recommend that you should do going forward. Um, if someone doesn't need to know your primary email that's 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 um, linked with your like your financial account, don't give it to them. So Next, I want to talk about is how serious are these data breaches? You know, a lot of times people think, hey, all right, I got an, a, mail, uh, a mail that says that my phone number or my social security number that's been compromised or my email address, like how serious is that? And, um, and, and with, with bad guys, they use this information to then try to do a lot of stuff. They try to duplicate themselves, and I'm going to be talking about. So before we get started on that, let's talk about what is a data breach. And essentially, a data breach is when your information is compromised. Email address, phone number, um, social security, you know, anything that's what is called PII, personally identifiable information. And when a company has a data breach, um, by law, they're supposed to inform you of this and this is why you're you're getting this um, notification and this is why you're probably watching this YouTube channel so how do these data breaches happen oh, there's so many ways um, they the company that notified you this they most likely got hacked or one of their vendors got hacked and that one of their vendors had their information another uh, way is that 
maybe they had an employee that stole that information. I mean, there's so many different ways of how data breaches happen. Um, it would literally be a video of itself, but just know that um, your personal information was compromised and it's being sold on the internet. I'm gonna give you a, a quick example. Um, let's just say someone got your name your and your email address and your password. You can go on the dark web and the dark web is where a lot of illegal stuff happen. And it's, think of it as a pawn shop, but but online. And people are selling that information for $2. That means when someone gets your information, they're selling your information for $2. And if they can get also your social security number and your home address, it goes for $8. So now that you have an idea of, of this, they're trading your information. Someone is stealing your information. They're, necess they're not necessarily going to do anything with it. All they're going to do now is put this in a big Excel spreadsheet, so to speak, and now they're going to try to sell your information to someone who's going to then say, oh, okay, hey, we were able to break into, I'm going to make up Spotify, and we know that 90% of consumers, if they use their password for one online application, they use their password for uh, for other applications. So maybe the same password that you use for your Chase banking is the same password that you use for your Spotify. And because they were able to get into your Spotify, there's a high chance that they can now take that username and they take in, they can take that password and and from Spotify and go to Chase and then be able to log into your account. So that's why it's so important that you do not use the same passwords for all of your accounts. You use something like a password manager and you basically have the most complicated passwords for all of these sites and that way if one site gets breached and the password gets breached, they, the bad guy can't then just start going in other places. So next we're gonna talk about what are the consequences of having your data stolen. As we mentioned, if they get your phone number, you may think, ah, oh, whatever, who cares if they have my phone number? Yeah, I'm probably gonna start getting more robocalls, but no. There's something called what uh, sim jacking, and what sim jacking is is when the bad guy is able to take your phone number and replicate it on their phone. And now the reason they want to do that is because they know if they try to go, they let's just say for example, they know your Chase username, they know your social security number. What they're gonna now want to do is they're gonna go and do forgot password. And guess what? When you go to those websites and they do forgot password, what do they want to know? They want to know, hey, what's your home address? What's your social security number? What's your favorite, what's your pet's name? All of this information that they stole from another source, from the doctor's office or from another online company, they now have that ac they now have that information to now go onto your banking site. And then the final thing that your banking is probably going to want to do, they're going to say, oh, uh, we're going to send a six digit code to your cell phone and you need to type it here. Well, the bad guy has your cell phone and they have what I just told you is SIM jacking. And what's going to happen is that you're going to get a text message and it's also going to be sent to the bad guy. And the bad guy is going to quickly go in and he's going to put in the six digit numbers and now he has access to your account. And then from there, they're going to start transferring money. They're going to start doing a lot of havoc and a lot of unnecessary stress on your side because you're going to be logging into your account and you're going to see a lot of issues. So. You know, the more information the hacker has about you, the better and easier it's going to be for them to um, hack into your system. So I would also suggest that next time you go to the Macy's and they're asking you for your birthday and you really want that 15% off next, give them, give them a fake birthday. If your birthday is April 15, give them April 16. Throw the bad guys off because that way, if they ever get, if they ever get hacked, they don't have your real information. So. Next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, and now we're gonna start talking about, you're, you've been hacked, you've, I've explained how it happens, I explained what they do with your information, and now let's get to the meat of what you're here for, and that's what to do. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is monitor your account, because the bad guys are gonna go after your money. So if you have um, a 401k account, a retirement account, a bank account, you're gonna to wanna to call all of them and say, hey look, I got hacked. And uh, in addition to getting hacked, the password that I use where I got hacked, I use it here too. 
So the bank will then, or the institution will then help you change your password, and you're gonna wanna turn on what is called two-form factor authentication. That way, if the bad guy is ever able to get into your account, then it's just an extra step. So that way you get a notification on your phone that there is um, someone trying to get into your account. You're also gonna wanna do credit monitoring. And credit monitoring, as you know, is where if someone uses your social security number, you get alerted, um, you can put credit freezes. A perfect example, when my mom, she actually got um, she actually got her identity stolen. And when she got her identity stolen, I said, mom, you gotta have credit monitoring, and she did it. A few months later, she gets a phone call from Dell, and the Dell representative is, is, is verifying that she is who she is. But the problem is, she wasn't trying to open up a Dell account. It was a bad guy in Texas trying to order a buttload of computers, about $10,000 worth of computers, but because my mom had the credit monitoring and the credit freeze, this person was trying to create a line of credit using my mom's social security number. And what they did is Dell basically, um, as they were trying to open up the account, there was an alert that says, you must speak with the person, you must call back the person to uh, open this account because they had a credit freeze on their account. And Dell followed the instructions, called the cell phone that was listed there, not the number of the bad guy. And then when my mom picked up, the Dell rep says, hi, I have you on the line and I need the password so I can type it in so that I can continue creating the account. And my mom's like, no, no, I, uh, 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 that's not me. So that's the importance of having credit monitoring. And many times when you do get hacked, um, these companies will offer that, and if they don't, I would call them up and say, hey, look, you, you, you owe me this. You owe me three years of monitoring because this monitoring is not cheap. It's like $15, $20 a month, and this is something that you're going to want to monitor for, for, unfortunately, the rest of your life. So a lot of times um, they will already offer uh, you know, two, three, four years of monitoring, and when it expires, I highly recommend that you uh, continue. Now, the next thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is set up alerts with your bank. So if you're one of your um, bank accounts, for example, uh, let's just say you had, uh, I'm going to go back to Spotify and your credit card number was there. And now they are now telling you that your credit card number was exposed. I personally, I know it's a pain, but I would just go ahead and cancel the account. I would call my bank and just say, hey, look, my one of my online accounts that I have had this credit card number, had this ACH information, and they were compromised. And I just don't want to uh, now one day look at my account and the money stream. And you know what the credit card or your banking is going to tell you? They're going to be like, you know what? We don't want to deal with the stress of you now calling us. We're going to have to do reversals. We're going to have to do disputes. We're going to have to do so much paperwork. So it's actually better for both parties to agree that, yep, you had a you had a vulnerability your information is out there and let's go ahead and close this account and let's just open up a new one let's go ahead and cre close that credit card and let's open up a new one banks rather do that rather than later on you now having to call their customer services and using their resources to get your money back so the next thing that you're going to want to do on my list here is let me just pull it up here sorry about that one of my screens closed All right, here we go. All right, so you call your bank. You, you, you. Next thing you want to do, we talked about the two form factor authentication. Again, making just adding a layer of security. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to let people know about what happened. You're going to want to, if for example, your email got compromised. You know how many times we then heard from other people to say, hey, look. Uh, I'm here in another country and I need you to send me $200, just for example. So you're going to want to let your friends know that, look, my account got hacked and if you get an email from me, it's not me. And a lot of times people will appreciate that because um, they're going to click on it and if they click on it, then it downloads malware on their computer and then the cycle continues. Other steps that you're going to immediately want to do is you're going to want to reset your password. Um, and especially if you were using that password somewhere else, 
you're going to want to go to that website and change it. Next thing you're going to want to do is scan your computer for viruses because um, we talk about third party online companies being hacked, but it could have came from your computer. Maybe your computer is the one that has some type of virus on it. And you're going to want to make sure that your computer has uh, proper protection and that there's nothing that could be uh, sending out to the bad guys. You're also going to want to move any sensitive data from your devices. If there's no reason for you, let's just say, for example, you have a copy of your driver license and it's on your computer. If, if it doesn't need to be there, if you could just keep maybe a paper copy of your license or a paper copy of your, date, uh, of your birth certificate, you want to minimize your risk. And if your laptop, your computer, your phone ever got stolen and you have that sensitive information, well, guess what? The bad guy has it too. Um, that's all I have as far as, you know, what to do when you get hacked. I'm sorry that you've gone through this, but I hope that in my video, you um, now know the next steps that you have to take. And um, if you did like this video, please go ahead and like and also um, subscribe because we come on this channel five days a week giving out information to the community and to um, just, you know, to the world to let them know that, you know, we do care um, not only about servicing our clients, but we also do care about giving public service announcements such as this so that you can now be protected. And uh, maybe you stumbled on this video and you haven't been hacked yet, keyword yet. Go, go rewind the video, listen to the steps that I talked about that you should be doing. The two form factor authentication, um, not giving out your date of birth to places where it, they just don't really need it. They're just going to use it for marketing. And then they're sloppy with the information, holding your information. And now you got hacked. So be careful with those things. Like and subscribe our page. And we'll see you next time. Um, and talking about cybersecurity and IT services.